Hey guys, Shadefire here, and I'm taking a first impressions look at something a little mellower than usual. This is Dear Esther, or rather, this is Dear Esther version 2. Originally, this game was released as a Source Engine mod back in 2008, and then completely redone with its own engine and everything as a commercial release this year. I haven't actually played any of this yet. I did play a little bit of the original mod, but I never finished it, so I don't know the overall narrative. Which is important because this game is less of a game and more of an interactive narrative with non-linear elements. All I really know is that we have washed up on this island. And that we are meant to explore. Dear Esther, the gulls do not land here anymore. I've noticed that this year they seem to shun the place. Maybe it's the depletion of the fishing stock driving them away. Perhaps it's me. When he first landed here, Donnelly wrote that the herds were sickly and their shepherds the lowest of the miserable classes that populate these Hebridean islands. 300 years later, even they have departed. Hebridean? That's an unfamiliar location to me. I believe it is in the Pacific, though. I'll have to check that later. One thing that I'm not clear about is whether these narrative fragments we hear are the voice of our character or someone else originally on this island. So, while it does traditionally play control-wise like a first-person shooter, that's obviously not, you know, a shooter, so much it is a first-person game. Similar in respects to Penumbra, but with even less uh, antagonistic enemies. Antagonistic enemies? Antagonistic beings than uh, Penumbra. It's less of a horror game and more of a creepy game, I guess, since there is no one left on this island, as far as I know. Uh, looks like a chemical formula. Hydrogen, 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 ox hydrogen oxide, oxygen hydride? I'm not sure. Doesn't seem to be much here. Alright, let's move on. Now, I do know that the, the narrative fragments we get are triggered by locations. And they're also sem semi-random. Seagull, an actual rendered seagull and not just a sprite. You know, it's funny, locations like this aren't too much in a video game, but these are the kind of places I love to see in real life. Really, this whole island would be a urban explorer's paradise. Now, now this is familiar. This is the same route that the original mod starts on, with you walking up the cliffside from the little dock down there. And there is a radio tower somewhere on the island, Donnelly as you can see over there. The legend of the hermit, a holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, when all that haunts the ocean is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side, and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claim to have seen him. I have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. So this is, I guess, the hermit's cave. It seems we can't really progress through here, so we're just going to continue back. Some of you might be disappointed with the lack of traditional video game action in this, but I think it's really interesting as a non-standard video game experience, one that actually focuses on narrative to the point where it doesn't... Oh, well, 
I'm sliding down the cliff. So I guess we're going to continue along the beach. But, like I was saying, it presents a very interesting focus on narrative over the traditional video game focus on gameplay. So pretty much the exclusion of one in favor of the other. However, if you're like someone like me who likes to explore the environments in a game, even if there isn't a, you know, a direct given reason to explore, like collectibles or anything, then you'll probably enjoy this game. At night, you can see the lights sometimes from a passing tanker or crawler. From up on the cliffs, they are the day. Down here, they fugue into ambiguity. For instance, I cannot readily tell if they belong above or below the waves. The distinction now seems banal. Why not everything and all at once? There's nothing better to do here than indulge in contradictions whilst waiting for the fabric of life to unravel. Is this... a whale? A parrot with a really long tail? Or something else entirely? The better question is how is anything drawn in the sand still here? Since clearly there's been no one here for a long time. And High Tide would probably wash this whole area out. There's also no linearity to your exploration of the Arathos Island. I have found we could have just gone up. Crumpled and waterlogged under a stash of paint cans. It tells me that along with this present cargo, there was a large quantity of antacid yogurt bound for the European market. It must have washed out to sea. God knows there are no longer gulls or goats here to eat it. Is that a tire? That is a tire and another tire and door. Seems oh, another door. Seems like somebody drove their car off this cliff, but the rest of the car appears to be absent. Perhaps it continued into the sea. I'm guessing our nameless protagonist probably doesn't like swimming. I don't think we can actually continue from down here. We'll have to move on back to where we were and go up the path. I know it might subtract from what they're going for a little bit, but a jump button would be nice. So I don't have to get stuck on those little rocks. I'm sure you don't want to watch me walk all the way back there. And now we've returned to the overgrown step. I'm not sure if there was a way to continue on that original ledge we were going up. And I just, you know, slipped. But... Either way, this will take us up to the island proper, I believe. Oh, see, there's where we fell off, so... Perhaps we were intended to go up this path if we wanted to go up. This definitely looks much better than it originally did in the Source Engine. Donnelly's book had not been taken out from the library since 1974. I decided it would never be missed as I slipped it under my coat and avoided the librarian's gaze on the way out. If the subject matter is obscure, the writer's literary style is even more so. It is not the text of a stable or trustworthy reporter. Perhaps it is fitting that my only companion in these last days should be a stolen book written by a dying man. When someone had died or was dying, or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice, they cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat, and know to send aid, or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. In fact,
resurrection is not simply of the flesh. So is this Depression Island? I actually believe that that radio tower there is our ultimate goal. You can see it's pretty far away right now. I quote directly, a motley lot with little to recommend. I have now spent three days in their company. That is, I fear, enough for any man not born amongst them. Despite their tedious inclination to quote scripture, they seem to me the most godforsaken of all the inhabitants of the outer isle. Indeed, in this case, the very gravity of that term, forsaken by God, seems to find its very apex. It appears to me that Donnelly, too, found those who wander this shoreline to be adrift from any chance of redemption. Did he include himself in that, I wonder? And I must add that the, the voice acting is pretty good. The original mod's voice acting was self-recorded by the mod's developers, who, actually I should point out, this game is published by... I don't remember if it's... I believe it's the Chinese Game Room? It's all one word. Dear Esther, Lowercase. I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. And what's interesting is that Chinese room, the Chinese room, really should have written it down ahead of time. We developed this game, has now been tasked into developing not so much the sequel, but the... I would leave the... you presents outside your retreat in this interim space between cliff and beach. I would leave you loaves and fishes, but the fish stocks have been depleted and I've run out of bread. I would row you back to your homeland in a bottomless boat, but I fear we would both be driven mad by the chatter of the sea creatures. The sequel slash expansion slash follow-up to Amnesia, Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Mostly, I think, due to their work on this game. Which I think if you combine the terror and claustrophobia of Amnesia with the hanshaw they have here for storytelling, I think you'd get something pretty amazing. And I'll be certainly looking forward to The Machine for Pigs. When it comes out, I might actually have a reason to finally get around to starting playing Amnesia, as I've only played about an hour of it. What's this? Fishes and loaves. Luckily that our nameless... I'd like to say protagonist, but perhaps cameraman would be better. Has decided to bring a flashlight with him when he washed up on this island. There's something certainly calming about this game, not having to worry about something lurking in the bushes to leap out at you. And after the amount of DayZ I've been playing recently, it's certainly a welcome change. I believe the original mod wasn't particularly long, but I'm getting the impression this game is probably a couple hours. 
The vegetation here has fossilized from the roots up. To think they once grazed animals here, the remnants of occupation being evidence to that. It is all sick to death. The water is too polluted for the fish, the sky is too thin for the birds, and the soil is cut with the bones of hermits and shepherds. I've heard it said that human ashes make great fertilizer, that we could sow a forest from all that is left of your hips and ribcage, with enough left over to thicken the air and repopulate the bay. From the sound of it, this is a pretty fucking bleak island. <laughs> For it to not be able to support any life anymore. What does that say? Something chemistry. And what looks to be some sort of Bible or other holy book. More chemical formulas. I'm sensing a theme developing here. Still, I believe if when we get up out of this little valley here it would be a good point to stop. As this game is really about its narrative, so I don't want to give too much of that away, in case you are so interested by it. In another game, I might be tempted to complain about the lack of ability to sprint, but I think it really would detract from this game, seeing as the traveling is really just as important as the destination here. Oh, well, it seems we're descending into a loading screen. Dear Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimeter using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn off the Sanford and the welcome break services. But although I can always see it in my rear view mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. Yet more crash ships. You'd think there'd be less of them, considering there's a lighthouse on this island, where we began. But, I think this is a good point to stop. We've seen the, the early sections, the arrival, and you get a little glimpse into the developing narrative. If you are someone who enjoys exploration and building a narrative throughout your, sto throughout your experience with the game, then I think th this game is something you should give a shot. I believe it is $10 on Steam. It might be 12 or so, but I do believe it actually it is 10 So, uh, yeah. If what you see is somewhat intriguing, then give it a shot. I know I'll certainly be playing through the rest of this over the next day or so. I've been Shadefire, and... I hope you enjoyed my look at Dear Esther. Farewell.